Welcome to another edition of the Getting the Deal Done podcast series. And this one is especially for business buyers. Uh, and it's on due diligence in 2021. So sellers, owners, advisors should also pay attention to this because things are a little different in 2021. So let's uh, cover three things here. Let's start with what is due diligence? It is proving what a business buyer has been told about a business during their analysis and offer making stage. It is not a time for surprises. Look, let's face it, most sellers are completely above board. If there are omissions, it's because they are the unconscious competent and they do things on memory, autopilot, things that buyers want to know about, they don't even think about they've been doing it so long. Also, there are no perfect businesses. There are no perfect deals. Keep that in mind. You, you can pick apart any business, just decimate it if you really want to do that. But if the business has been profitable year after year after year and growing, and you know where you can add value as a buyer, you want to prove it and move on to owning it. So again, not surprises, proof. And as former President Reagan said, we will trust but verify. Second, what's the difference between analysis and due diligence? So during analysis, you are getting basic information about the company. It starts with financial statements along with, and if you would like a copy, just call or email for our initial disclosure form. It's a little over 30 yes, no questions, a couple other things, an information request. And you're gonna uncover if there are any big red flags with the company. You're gonna use that big picture information to make an offer with the seller understanding that you're gonna go into minute detail on everything that you base the offer on. So three quick examples. Customers are an easy one. Everyone's concerned about customer concentration. You also wanna be concerned about other things with customers like pricing and loyalty. But during analysis, you'll get a list of customers by revenue, percentage of sales, but you probably will not get the name of the customer or customers. Same thing with employees. You may get a list of tenure, maybe age, job duties, description, title, but you won't get their name. And when it comes to the numbers, yes, you will get financial statements, you will get tax returns, but you're not gonna get access to the accounting system like QuickBooks. You're not gonna get the bank statements and other behind the scenes things. And you may even do a quality of earnings report or a mini audit as we used to call it, where you are comparing bank statements and accounts receivable and payables to what's on the statements. And then third, diligence in 2021, and yes, it has changed. It has got a lot more thorough. Many banks are still using COVID questionnaires and they should be. Live Oak Bank has one out of 17 questions. Other banks have more informal ones, but they are asking about what happened, just like every buyer should. What happened during COVID? What happened during the Great Recession of 2008, 9, 10? How tied to the economy is the business? And then we get into the usual suspects, the non-financial factors. Let's start with one that doesn't get mentioned that much. It's technology. I cannot remember the last time a client bought a company where the computer systems, the software, the hardware, et cetera, are all up to date. Owners, especially when selling, will put off replacing those computers. Oh, what about HR? Oh my gosh. I mean, that, that's a, uh, that is, for a lot of companies, trouble waiting to happen. 
things are so detailed. It's why I recommend to owners, if you're not big enough to have a full-time director of HR, which is a pretty darn good sized company, you need to outsource your HR function or at least the compliance part so you don't violate any of the, or just call them, some of them silly laws that are on the books. And especially if you're in multiple states, multiple municipalities. But then we got the basics. We got the customers. And again, I mentioned diversity and loyalty and pricing. And again, who has the relationship with the customer? Is it the seller? Uh, that's a dependency on the owner. We don't want that. Just like we don't want one customer being 40% or 50%. What about employees? You can't pick up a publication these days and not find something about employees. People wanting to change jobs, the shortages of employees in all kinds of industries, manufacturing, hospitality, school bus drivers, technology. Technology workers saying, or a third of them saying, when COVID is over, they are going to be looking for a new job. And again, you can't pick up a publication or hear something on the news, it seems, without something about supply chain issues. Very important. Banks are going to check into that. Buyers are going to check into that in detail. I recently spoke to an owner of a manufacturing business doing about $20 million a year. He said, I'm about to raise prices again. He said, we've raised prices a handful of times in the last year. I don't like doing it. Hadn't done it for quite a while, but we have to. Our vendors come to us and say, we're raising the price. If you don't like it, we got other people to sell to. Implied, not directly saying that. And he feels the same way. His customers are going to have to eat the cost increases. And what about the lease? Lease is always important. The lease is, the bank's not going to make a loan without you without the lease covering uh, the term of the loan with options. There are a few exceptions, yes. Uh, one of Jessica's clients recently lost a deal because the landlord would not give a long enough lease. And real estate prices are skyrocketing. The lease that the seller has, the, the rent payment may not be the rent payment the buyer's gonna have, and the buyer better find that out before they finalize any deal and get too far down the road. So that's diligence in 2021. The basics are analysis first, trust but verify, and really, really be digging into the non-financial factors, the suppliers, the customers, the employees, the HR, the technology, the lease, all of that. This is John Martinka. Thanks for watching or listening to this podcast, whether you are on our uh, podcast channel or YouTube. If you would like that initial disclosure form, uh, email me, john at johnmartinka.com or call 425-576-1814. Thank you.